Okay, good morning. It is Friday, <laughs> January 15. And for some of us, that means a break from going to work. For some of us, it means simply a continuation of the days before. That would be, <laughs> that would be my case. Whatever boat you're in, I hope this weekend is a blessing to you and that it is a time of refreshment in the Lord. Yesterday, we ended with Ephesians 6, 13, which read, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, we know that we have to have faith that the Lord will overcome sin and that we are a part of the winning victory. To that end, God has given us a mission to fulfill. Before Jesus left the earth, after his victorious resurrection, he left instructions for instructions for his followers to go through all the world and spread the gospel, which means good news. Well, Satan's going to do his best to stop us. He doesn't want the good news spread. Well, why would he? He tried to take the Lord's creation in the most traitorous coup ever attempted. So he certainly isn't going to stop when he believes he can knock the Lord's children around. This is why Paul put such an exclamation mark on this part of his letter to the church of Ephesus. He wanted them to know in no uncertain terms, we are here to do the Lord's work and we're here to stand against all evil opposition. So the Bible gives us plenty of help in this spiritual battle by showing us how we stand. Romans 5.2, if you want to look it up, please feel free. It says we stand in grace. 1 Corinthians 15.1, we stand in the gospel. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, we stand in courage and strength. 2 Corinthians 1, 24, we stand in faith. And Philippians 4, 1, we stand in the Lord. Now, when we're serving the Lord, we're going to be attacked. And that's what surprises some people at times. They think mean, you, when you become a Christian, life is just a bed of roses. Mm -mm. it's the thorns and they grow worse because we're not living in God's world at this time. Satan has been allowed to have a pretty heavy presence and um, the Lord is allowing this for his purposes. So we're working against all that is in the world when we serve the Lord. So to that end, we're going to be attacked. Makes sense, right? We don't have to be afraid at all. Because the Lord gives us so many verses and so much in his word that tells us how we stand in grace. We stand in the gospel. We stand in faith. We stand in the Lord. So to that end, it means we can never fight half-heartedly. If you fight half-heartedly, the enemy's going to knock you out by your legs. And a half-hearted fight is often because we're pitying ourselves. Now, we're all going to do it. I've done it. We're all going to do it. But... And we have to, when those times come, call somebody that's stronger, get in the word of the Lord, read a scripture that always encourages you, listen to some Christian music, bulk yourself up. I used that word the other day because that's what my dad used to say, bulk up, bulk up. Well, it's, there's a lot of good word there. It's a lot of uh, visual that's important. We need to reinforce ourselves in God's word so that we're not pitying ourselves and so that we don't fight half-heartedly. We also have to remember these words, the Lord's army never retreats. But God's army never retreats. I'm not saying that we shouldn't retreat at, time, at times, and so don't let that scare you. There's going to be times when we're just exhausted, and we need to go to the back of the battle and let the stronger brothers and, Christ, and Christ, sisters in Christ fight the battle. Give yourself a chance to lick your wounds to get a, a, you know, a spiritual drink, to get some spiritual food. It's okay, that happens. But we can't stay there forever. Because then who's going to spot our brothers and sisters in Christ when they're just as exhausted? You ever see the way the birds fly in that wonderful V pattern? That's the Lord's creation. The Lord did that. The guy at the head, the bird at the head of the pack and the ones behind him, directly behind him, they pull the rest along in their stream. That's why we see them changing that rotation so often. They're constantly changing and forming a new V. 
look it up. Don't trust my word for it because I'm certainly not a uh, uh, complete, very smart person when it comes to explaining some things. But that's why birds fly in a V pattern. It's the same with us in the bottle. There's times when we're at the head and we're pulling everybody along behind us. And there's other times when we're going to the back to get a break. And that's okay. Just know that you're not going to stay in the back forever. Sometimes I personally want to sit in the couch and watch mindless reality TV. I shouldn't tell you that, but that's that's what I do when my brain's on overload. I go watch reality TV, which is brainless and mindless and it's completely stupid, but it's what I do to give my brain a break. <coughs> but I can't sit on that couch all day long. I can't sit in a spiritual couch or a physical couch all day long because it's not going to win a battle for the Lord. So I'm constantly kicking myself into gear to get back off that spiritual and physical couch. So let's continue with Ephesians 6, 14 to 15. Now we're going to hear about what we start to put on. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now we're getting to the armor. So we're going to go through this one piece a day. One piece a day. So we really know what we're putting on and why we're putting it on. So today we're going to gird our waists with truth. Now, remember Paul's in a, um, um, he's in a home, house arrest. Not necessarily his house, but he's in a house arrest somewhere. And at the daytime, I said, the soldiers follow him. And at night, he is chained to one of them. So when Paul was writing this letter, he had a real bird's eye view of the armor that these burly guys wore in day in and day out. He was chained to a soldier at night because the powers in charge were terrified of this little oddball man that he was going to escape the entire body of soldiers who were surrounding him. And they had a right to be fearful of that because it had happened in the past. It happened with Peter and it happened with Paul. So they're chaining him every night to a soldier. And when he's chained to the soldier at night, more than likely at times when he goes to shift to try to sleep easier, he's laying on these chains or he's gotten, he's bumping a piece of metal. He, he is never at, at any time unaware of what these soldiers are wearing. So when he is looking at their armor and he's describing how we put on God's armor, he's got a real close eyeball of what's going on. So he says, stand therefore, stand with your waist girded about by truth. Now, the belt that it's speaking of here is a sturdy piece of leather, but it's wider than we think of as a man's belt. It's more of a girdle sized uh, and, and it protects this the soft part of your belly. It protects, the, it protects the soldiers' soft part of their belly. Plus it also holds up their garments, their outer garments that they put on to keep everything else from falling down. Truth is our belt. God's truth. Don't be confused. God's truth. The belt, while it's not a designated piece of the armor, according to some of the scholars, before the other parts of the armor can be put on, the truth has to be worn. Think about that. There's so much spiritual meat there. We must have God's truth on us before we try to put on any of his battle armor. We have to understand his truth so that we know why we're in this battle in the first place. God's truth is the word. It is the Bible. It is all the word from Genesis to Revelation. All of it. The girdle, according to the scholars I read, not only helped keep the other parts in place, but it gave a soldier that, you know how you you walk with a swagger? You ever um, see these movies, uh, Spartacus and these other ones, where they're, they're wearing these girdles and they walk with a swagger? It's really, really really wonderful to watch. It's a little intimidating if you're on the other side. And they walk with this swagger, this complete swagger, because we are walking in God's truth. We are completely free if we're walking in God's truth. We have his stance. Our heads are up. Our shoulders are back. We're going into battle with a swagger. That's the way we need to think of this. Our truth is based in the Lord and only in him. Jesus used another way of expressing this when he was talking to his disciples and he was talking about being ready for the groom to come. He writes in Luke 12, verses 35 to 36, and I'm using the new revised standard version. So it's a very 
basic English. He says, be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Another way for us to visualize this in our heads is when a soldier sat down and he was relaxed, he removed that belt and girdle and he was kind of like, and his posture kind of fell and he just kind of, you know, languished and, and relaxed. But when he put that belt on, he immediately took that stance again. He was prepared for battle. It put it in his head that he was getting ready for battle. The belt of truth is God's word. We have to have faith that we know God because we know his word. So nobody can take God's truth from us. Nobody can steal the Bible from us. They may physically take pages of it, but if we've memorized it, if we know it in our hearts, they can't take it from us. Certain parts of the world, the Bible is so precious that when it's able to be smuggled in, in whatever means, it's taken apart. They don't just hand this Bible intact person to person. They hand out pieces of it because the word of God is so precious and they're desperate for it. And that's how we have to think of the gods uh, of the word of the Lord. Don't just leave your Bible sitting there getting dust or use a Kindle, use a tablet. I like to go on, on the Mac because I like to pull up all the different versions. And there's a really cool version called the Interlinear Bible. That brings up the original Greek, the original Aramaic, the original Hebrew. And then if you click on those words, it takes you to the English. That one's really cool to use. Whatever you do, however you read it, read God's word. You see, Satan has a damning lie. It is a damning lie. Satan's lie is this. In this world, man has some narcissistic thought process that his truth is the truth. In fact, there's those that will say, well, that's my truth, or, well, don't steal my truth, or you're taking my truth. That's a perversion of the Lord's word. It's a lie straight from the pits of hell. Don't use it. If somebody says it to you, run, because they're, they're distorted. They're they are literally living in some kind of a freaky satanic law land because there is no such thing in the Bible. There is God's word and God's word is truth. I'm not trying to confuse you here. There's times at an accident. It's a great example. Every witness sees that accident from this viewpoint. So they're not seeing everything that went on. So they can be very confused sometimes when they give uh, the police well, this is what I saw. This is my truth. This is what I saw. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that dig in, that they are spiritually in their truth. That's my truth. That's an entirely different thing, and it's a lie from Satan. So let's go back to the only basis we have for truth, and that's God's word, the Bible. Jesus says in John 17, 17, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is is truth. The word of God is truth and it is through knowing and applying this truth that we are sanctified daily and we are made holy and righteous and we're ready to wear the armor. If you don't make it a habit to read the Bible, you should. Don't depend on me or anyone else to give you it straight because I know I've already had Bible studies and I goof things up because I'm human and I go back and I read and I think, oh rats, that was a little off of what I should have said. So read it for yourself. There's a lot of versions of the Bible to read. Like I said, I love the Holman Christian version. I love the revised version. I love the interlinear. Find whatever version you like and read it. But read it for yourself. God will show you his truth. And you'll start to develop a belt slash girdle of truth for yourself. That's going to be so strong. It's going to protect your soft gut. Because you will have God's word hidden in there. Instead of ending with a song today, we're going to end with this thought. We end with the first piece of garment we need to make sure we wear the rest of the armor properly, the whole armor of God. And that piece of garment is the belt of truth, God's word, the Bible. Psalm 119.11 in the New International Version, it goes like this. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. There you go. Our first piece of armor. God's belt slash girdle, his word, the truth. Have a blessed day. Bye.